Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Elite ARM chip is apparently faster than the M3. What will we do? M4, I guess. But will that be fast enough? Let's get geeky. Want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Microsoft is expecting the new Snapdragon chips for its future Surface devices to be 21% faster than the M3, along with its own x86 emulation layer, similar to Apple's Rosetta 2, but even faster. So, is Apple's lead gone? Well, no, not really, because we're comparing the Snapdragon to the entry level of Apple's latest chip generation, not the M3 Pro, the M3 Max, or the still currently theoretical M3 Ultra. Even so, it's nice to get a little competition, so well done Snapdragon, you keep it up buddy. You keep it up. Now, the Surface Pro, currently in its cheapest undiscounted form, starts at 1099, and that's with an Intel Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD storage. So, it's a little bit more expensive than the MacBook Air, and somehow, I've never heard anyone complain about it having 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Also, it appears to not to come with a keyboard, so there's that. There's also a non pro version, which is less tablet, more keyboardy, and that's starts at 999 with the same specs but only if you're happy with a not metal and alcantara one so it feels a bit like a car seat if you want the metal one you're starting at 1269 and the snapdragon version which seems to be listed as the microsoft sq3 which is the old version basically with the same storage and ram 8 gigabytes and 256 starts at 1399 without a keyboard but that version came out in 2022 and the m3 is over twice as fast as that in single and multi-core Geekbench scores. So this new X Elite must be a massive jump to beat the M3 by 21%. We'll see what happens in the real world, but it should be said that the M3, according to Geekbench, is still 28.8% faster in single core tasks, which is what makes your system feel fast, snappy, and nimble. Only in the more sustained workflows will the Snapdragon have an advantage, say, rendering a video, converting multiple files, that sort of thing. Now, that is absolutely relevant, and if it wasn't, we wouldn't have things like the M3 Max, which takes what you get in the M3, the same design of the efficiency and performance cores, just gives you a lot more of them, and more GPU cores too to boot. And when you compare that Snapdragon X Elite to the M3 Max, the Max handily smashes the newcomer with more than 50% more performance in multi-core than the Elite. And in OpenCL, the M3 Max hits almost 95,000 points, while the single test result on Geekbench for the X Elite is, is 10. It's got 10 points. Now, I think that test probably didn't really work, but if it did, then the M3 Max is about 9,500 times faster on graphics. So let's just assume that's right. But more importantly, with M4 on the horizon, and let's be honest, the Snapdragon not really being available yet in the real world, the M4 is probably more likely to be the real competitor to it here. How will the M4 perform? We are, of course, getting a bit into speculation here, but we have three generations of Apple Silicon to look back on, and so far the improvements have been, well, improving year on year, with M1 to M2 getting around 10% more single-core performance, 15% more multi-core performance, and then when we went from the M2 to the M3, we're getting just over 20% improvements on both single and multi-core. Now, bearing in mind that the M3 is already almost 30% faster in that snappy feeling single core, an extra 20% boost would be huge, and 20% on the multi-core brings it in line with the X Elite. Before we touch on the Snapdragon's weakness, though, my weakness is you watching this so far without subscribing. So go on, you know you want to. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that the Snapdragon X Elite has a TDP of 45 watts, while the M3 is just under half of that at 22 watts. That means less heat in the M3 to dissipate, less need for noisy fans, and potentially twice the operational time from a similar battery. That's a big deal. Oh, and apparently when the Elite got that 21% faster Geekbench score, the X Elite was set up on an 80 watt device profile, so almost 400% of the power consumption and heat for a 21% bump in performance. Maybe the battle's still on. So, roll on June when the first X Elite laptop is set to go on sale. Then we can see how it performs in the real world, in the power and thermal constraints of a real device, like our M3 tests have been so far. Often without a fan at all, in the M3's case, in a MacBook Air. And of course, 
June is WWDC time when Apple will be likely dropping the M3 Ultra chips ahead of M4, which I'm still hoping we'll be seeing in October, just like the M3 that we saw last October at Scary Fast. Now, it's great that the other team are finally at least trying. ARM is a great platform and it's available to anyone. Uh, at least anyone with the budget to license the instruction set like Apple does to design their own processors or to license the core designs themselves as I believe Qualcomm does. ARM is a risk architecture which means it's using more simple commands but getting them through the pipeline more quickly and without friction compared to x86 which is your Intel's and your AMD processors. And while the Elite runs at higher power levels than the M3, it's certainly more efficient than x86 chips with the equivalent performance. Now, competition is good, and I hope Snapdragon keeps it up. It'll make Apple work even harder to keep their lead. But for now, I think the Silicon Crown is safe in Cupertino. Thank you so much for watching my geeky dive into the Snapdragon X Elite and a little bit of a preview of the M4. If you like this kind of geeky Apple content or the latest Apple news leaks and rumours, like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, all that good stuff and thank you to my Patreons over here for being just generally the best people I think in the world?